All right, so here we go with the gas laws and math. Now, I, I, I skipped a unit here with my videos um, slacking, springtime. Um, but no, not really. We just we learned the relationship between pressure, volume, temperature, uh, and moles. So we have discussed uh, this already, um, and we're able to perhaps see the relationship between pressure and volume using the uh, Oklahoma State gas law program that we did a lab with. So we, we saw that if you have something like this, so this is a uh, this is a, a piston, and we have some gas particles floating around in the piston. And this thing is movable, so this thing can go up and down. As you increase or decrease the pressure, uh, you would change the volume. You could also uh, change the temperature, and you could change N, which, remember, that's moles. So N is moles. So P, V, T, and moles. Uh, and again, if you haven't seen this before, if you're just watching these videos, uh, you could Google... OK state gas laws, and you'll find this simulation, and it's a fantastic way to look at the gas laws. All right, so anyway, let's say this particular gas, to start with, is at a pressure of one atmospheres and a volume of one liter. And we take this and we squash it down. So we're going to increase the pressure all the way up to two atmospheres. So what we're going to do now, then, is we're going to do some math. Again, we did it qualitatively before. We learned that if you increase the pressure, it will decrease the volume. They're inversely proportional. And we learned about the graphs and other things associated with that. But now we want to know the math. Um, and math people will tell you, because the people that are good at math are going to recognize, if the pressure is doubled, so we're going to increase the pressure, and what's going to end up happening is this piston is going to end up you know, down at that position. And the volume is going to be one half of what it was in the beginning because it is an inverse relationship. So if you double, that would be one over two or a half. So if the pressure is double, the volume will be halved. All right, and so those that are not math people are going to say, what? But for them, here's we go. So all right, so we're going to show you a simple way to do the gas laws in math. If you search gas laws on the, uh, on the Internet, you're going to find a whole bunch of different formulas used to calculate uh, those uh, volumes and pressures and temperatures like I just showed you. I don't like to do it that way because I don't think you should have to memorize formulas. I think knowing the relationships, uh, you don't need to be able to do that. And I saw uh, a demonstration once of this with a, a bar like this. So you can see on this bar we have uh, pressure, we have temperature, and we have volume. So P, T, and V. Now, absence from this is moles. And for this first a uh, little bit here. We're, the moles are going to stay constant in all of the calculations. So we're going to be looking at Boyle's Law, Charles' Law, and Galesic's Law. So those three, um, not Avogadro. So out of the four named um, gas laws that we discussed in our last test, we're not going to vary the moles. We're not going to do that for another few days. All right, so anyway. So here's the relationship. If you can place the fulcrum at the constant. So what I have right here is a representation of Boyle's Law. Because right here, temperature is held constant. And we have P, T, and V. An easy way to remember this is it's alphabetical. P, T, then V. So alphabetical. Well, here's what you can do. If the pressure goes down, the volume goes up. So you can see the pressure went down. And the volume went up. So the relationship between pressure and volume is their opposite. So pressure goes down, volume goes up. And the opposite of that, uh, if the pressure goes up, the volume would go down. So an easy way to do that. So when you solve these calculations the way I'm about to show you, if you put PTV across the top of your paper and then just hold your pen over the one that is held constant and spin your paper, and then you'll see the relationship. All right, so if pressure goes up, volume goes down. Pressure goes down, volume goes up. All right, what about temperature and volume? So if that case, uh, pressure would be held constant. And so if the volume goes up, temperature goes up, volume goes down, temperature goes down. Again, I know it's not perfect, but uh, you get the idea. So then the third one would be, what if the volume is held constant? Pressure goes up, temperature goes up, pressure goes down, temperature goes down. So once again, if you write that right across the top of your paper, and you can see the only opposite relationship then is pressure and volume. So pressure up, volume down, pressure down, volume goes up. All right, so here's how it works. Do we need to know which law this is? No. What you're going to do is you're going to say P, T, and V, initial and final condition. So there's a change that is going to occur in these problems. You have to be able to recognize units. For example, when you read 500 milliliters, you've got to know which column this goes in. Is that a pressure? Is that a temperature? And is that a volume? Well, 
milliliters of volume. So I know that that goes there. It says it is a gas at 100.0 kilopascal. So we did for our last test four different units of pressure. And then I would add to that anything cubed, centimeters cubed, meters cubed, millimeters cubed. Sorry, because these would be the volumes. So we can do milliliters and liters, but we could also have anything cubed. And then these four units right here would be pressures. All right, so that's a KPA. And we learned standard pressure. We learned the other values there uh, of pressure. So you could go look those up, or if you're in my class, you don't have to. You have it. All right, so it says it expands to 1,000 milliliters. All right, so the volume went from 500 to 1,000. What is the new pressure? Now, in our problems here, temperature is not mentioned, which means it's not changing. So it's held constant. So then our relationship is the volume is going from 500 to 1,000. So the volume is going up. And again, if this was the fulcrum, that means the pressure would go down. All right, so here's how you finish it. You say pressure equals the pressure you started with, which is 100.0 kilopascals, times these fractions or these volumes in a fraction. So we're either going to do 500 over 1,000 or we're going to do 1,000 over 500. So that's our two choices. Now, the way we figure that out is by knowing the relationships, as we already said. The volume is going up. If the volume goes up, that means the pressure goes down. And this arrow right here will tell you where to put the big number. So in order to make this go down, I've got to put the bigger number on the bottom. Now, notice I left off the units because milliliters and milliliters are going to cancel. And so my final answer is going to be in kilopascals. Let me say that again. The volume went up, so the pressure must go down. So I put the bigger number on the bottom to make it go down. So now I have 100 times 500 divided by 1,000, and the answer there is 50. But those that are good at math are saying, yeah, that makes sense, because the volume's doubled, so the pressure should be halved, and it is. So even without knowing how to do all of that in your head or being very good at relationships with math, you can figure these out. Now, every one of these problems can be done the same way. Let me go on to a few more. All right, so again, we don't even have to copy the problem. We're just going to do PTV, the initial conditions and the final conditions. If the gas pressure is changed from 750 torr, unit of pressure, at 5 liters to 250 torr, what is the resulting volume? So once again, the temperature is not mentioned, so we're going to assume that the temperature doesn't change. Volume equals 5 liters times pressure fraction. Pressure is going from 750 to 250. The pressure is going down. Pressure is going down. Again, the fulcrum is here. So if this goes down, the volume is going to go up. So to make it go up, we put the larger number on the top. And so once again, the people that are good at math are saying, wait a minute, that's an easy one again, because the pressure is one third, so the volume should be three times. But again, you don't even have to know that. Just set it up with the relationship. The pressure was going down, therefore the volume should go up. And so the big number goes on the top to make it go up. And then I can kind of compare. It was 5. Now it's 15. So yeah, I, otherwise I would have this you know, upside down. All right, next one. Temperatures. Right away, when I see a temperature in the problem, I cross it out. Because the gas laws, if you recall from our last test, cannot vary according to Celsius, but instead according to Kelvin. So I'm going to cross both of those Celsius temperatures out, and I'm going to add 273 to get Kelvin. So 298K, 373K. Um, and now I can fill in my P, T, and V chart, initial and final. All right, so I have 273 Kelvin. So that is a temperature. And it's at 2.5 atmospheres. That's a pressure. It changes to 373 Kelvin. I'm sorry, 298. I wrote the wrong number there. What is the resulting pressure? So what's the new pressure? So now this time volume is not mentioned. So volume would be our fulcrum. Um, we'd say pressure equals 2.5 atmospheres times temperature is going up. So if that goes up and the fulcrum is here, the pressure is also going to go up. So we'd want to put the larger number on the top to make it larger or make it, make it go up. So 2.5, let me get my calculator this time. This one we can't do in our head. So 2.5 times 373 divided by 298, and we get 3.13 atmospheres, because this Kelvin and Kelvin would cancel, and so our units uh, are going to be whatever the units of pressure are, which in this case was atmospheres. 
So we changed the laws. Now we're talking about temperature and pressure, but we solved the calculation as the same, knowing the relationships uh, between the pressure, the temperature, and the volume. So once again, P, T, and V, initial and final. Ah, Celsius, get rid of that. Add 273 to that, and you get 423 Kelvin. Okay, so the pressure is, this time we're in atmospheres. The temperature is 423 Kelvin. The volume's not mentioned this time. What is the pressure at standard temperature? All right, so we do have to know a little bit there. Standard temperature is zero Celsius. So when we add that, we get 273. The easy way to remember standard temperature is, it's what you add to get to Kelvin from Celsius. So we add that, we got 273. All right, so pressure equals 0.25 atmospheres times. All right, so the temperature is going from 423 to 273. So the temperature is going down. When the temperature goes down, the pressure also goes down. So I want to put the larger number on the bottom. Again, Kelvins will cancel. My units are going to be atmospheres. Um, 0.25 times 273 divided by 423, and I get 0.161 atmospheres for the pressure. And I could evaluate whether I got it right or not. It was 0.25, it went to 0.1, and so it went down. So I know I set up my fraction correctly. Two more. What is the pressure? Oh, uh, once again, get rid of that. Add 273 to that, we get 423. P, T, and V, initial and final. 0.25 atmospheres. 423 Kelvin. So the initial conditions are exactly the same as the last problem. But this time it says, what is the temperature in degrees Celsius at standard pressure? So we learned uh, those four standard pressure values that we used as conversion factors to do our manometer problems for the last test. I did make some manometer problem videos, if I remember correctly. So there's our four uh, that we memorized, the four standard pressure values in different units. So our initial pressure is in atmosphere, so it makes sense for us to use 1 atm here. I could have used 101.3 kPa, but then I would have had to change my initial pressure to kPa because they have to be the same. All right, so what's the temperature? All right, so T equals 423 Kelvin times pressure is going from 0.25 to 1. Pressure is going up. When the pressure goes up, the temperature will also go up. So I want to put the larger number on the top. So I get 423 times 1, divided by 0 0.25, and I got 1692, 1692. Now that's Kelvin, and if you notice in the problem I said in degrees Celsius, but we can never use Celsius in these problems. We have to use Kelvin. It varies according to the Kelvin temperature. So we got to change it to Kelvin, but then when I'm done, instead of adding 273, I'm just going to subtract it to get back to Kelvin. So minus 273, and I get 1419 degrees C. All right, one last one. So I've held the temperature constant. I've held the volume constant. So now we're going to hold the pressure constant. P, T, and V, initial and final. Once again, oh no, we don't want that. 425 or 423 Kelvin. Once again, this is negative 40, so plus 273 uh, gives me 243 Kelvin. No, it doesn't. It gives me 233 Kelvin. All right, so initial pressure. Well, there's no pressures mentioned. That's the constant one. Temperature started at 423, ended up at 233. The volume started at 750. And we don't know, well, where is it going to end up? All right, so volume equals the volume, 750 centimeters cubed, times temperature is going down. When the temperature goes down, the volume will also go down. So we're going to put the bigger number on the bottom to make it go down. So if we want to make it go up, we put the bigger number on the top. To make it go down, we put the bigger number on the bottom. All right, so back to my calculator. I have 750 times 233 divided by 423, and I get 413. Now that would be centimeters cubed. All right, any questions? Um, let me know.